A report out today from the Grattan Institute says that net zero in this country is doable with gas, that you don't need any more coal-fired power stations in this country. Are you willing to accept that, given that no one's up, out there stumping up money to build a coal-fired power station in New South Wales or Queensland? Well, Chris, it comes down to how much do you want to pay for electricity? Uh, most of this stuff is just uncosted twaddle. Uh, <laughs> you want to have a solar panel on the roof of every house? Well, that means it generates at exactly the same time, it peaks at the same time. You have to upgrade the entire distribution system, so all those wires and poles and things that connect uh, to your house and through your suburb and out to transformers. It is an incredibly expensive business. Uh, and for what? Uh, to meet some idealistic goal. Now, we're committed to 2030. Uh, we're delivering on that commitment. And once again, we're out arguing about the source of energy rather than how you reduce emissions. Look, there's no doubt that uh, even with the level of renewables we've got in the system now, you need more gas-fired energy to flatten that out, to sort of pump in energy when there's, uh, there's no renewable energy around to fill in those intermittent gaps. Is there a role for coal, though? Do you need coal in the future as you end up with more renewables? Well, I'll put a question to you, Chris. If, if you're in for a uh, quadruple bypass, what do you want to rely on for your electricity? A, a solar panel, a coal-fired power station, uh, potentially a small modular reactor from nuclear, gas or a uh, traditional hydro? I know my, my answer is I want it reliable, affordable, and it's on every time I turn on the switch. Australians shouldn't have to look out the window to decide if they can turn the stove on. Yeah, there's no doubt. And even when you look at these reports and all these people are arguing, they're, they're talking about somehow they're going to build in storage, storage capacity that we don't have any... nowhere near now, and, and which even under their modelling uh, might give you storage for a, for a short period of time. But the question comes back to whether or not you can get more of this dispatchable power built. It just doesn't seem for any possibility that any private investor is going to back a coal-fired power station. Are you going to end up having to stump up with well, government money? Well, the, the biggest issue is that no state premier uh, in current states and territories in terms of their leadership will approve one. Uh, I'm a big supporter of the coal sector. Uh, Healy combined with CCS, 90% reductions in emissions. Now, that sounds all right to me. Uh, so if you're out comparing apples with apples and you look at the actual cost, including all of the transmission that's being proposed by EMO and others, uh, I'm an electrical engineer. That just says to me an increase in risk and a reduction in reliability. Uh, we want to ensure that Australia is efficient. We have affordable uh, energy, including in gas, and we want to have manufacturing back on shore. And to do that, it is all about power prices and gas prices. So it is gas. Gas is the future. That's where you'll get state government cooperation. Well, hopefully. Uh, well, apart from in New South Wales, <laughs> Matt Keane li leaves them some sort of alternative reality. Uh, I live in the world of the actual, where we've got to get this stuff on the ground. I don't expect private companies will be out undercutting their profit margins by building more generation. Uh, that means we have to get involved, and Angus is certainly doing a lot of work. Yeah, well, it's a very difficult situation at the moment. You're looking at uh, Liddell closing in a couple of years, but there's just nothing on the ground. We hear this talk, all these considerations, what's not being approved by the states, what the federal government would like to see happen. When are we going to see some solid investments in dispatchable power? Uh, Chris, as I've said, I think if we leave this to the private sector, nothing will happen uh, because if there's a shortfall in the market, their margins go up substantially. They make more money for themselves and their shareholders. So governments do need to get involved. Uh, we need to make sure that there is uh, significant amounts of di dispatchable power available. And now I'm, I don't care how that happens as long as it works. So, so, having under, so, for all I so, so having undermined dispatchable power by subsidising renewables, taxpayers are now going to have to sus subsidise dispatchable powers to, to, power to make up for the shortfalls. Well, this comes down to decisions by the states to not have a reliability standard. Uh, and, yeah, you know, we've seen the outcomes of this in South Australia. We're seeing it in Victoria. It means the early closure of baseload stations, which have been reliable for decades and have kept our prices down uh, and the lights on, uh, to what is now very, very intermittent supply, which peaks at some times and has absolutely zero at others. So if you've got to build two sets to make sure these things work, well, that's where it's at. This yeah. is a very unfortunate position of the states and their decisions, but uh, you know, we've got to make sure that the Australia and its interests are looked after. To do that, we've got to have enough available electricity and, and gas at the moment is certainly the solution.